Hey, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here checking in on the channel here on the YouTube channel, May 3rd, 2020, 5 25 p.m. Um, honestly, I'm I'm gonna be honest I'm pretty sure time is fast forwarding I don't know if you guys are experiencing it or not but I think we're seeing a, a fast forward on the time um, on that time map that time frame right at least for me anyway it seems like everything's speeding up I mean I can't believe it's already May uh, in my mind's eye I could have swore it's like maybe early March but uh, it's definitely speeding up right now, folks. A lot of stuff going on out there in the earthquake world today and over the past couple days. The latest earthquake, a 2.5 out there in Oklahoma, central Oklahoma. Not a big quake, folks. Definitely not a big quake. But if you take a look over here to the west, about 1, uh, 1,400 miles or so, 1,500 miles to the west. A lot of activity occurring out here in the western coast. All the way down from the southern part of the San Andreas Fault System. All the way up into Northern California along the triple junction of the Mendocino Point area. That's the area where the North American, the Pacific, and the Juan de Fuca Plate meet. I call it the triple junction. It's definitely known as that. And there's definitely uh, some earthquake activity. A 3.4 earthquake striking out there earlier today. Let's go ahead and take a look at globally real quick before I go in locally. Uh, 5.1 earthquake striking out here way out there somewhere where I'd like to be right now. Out there in the South Pacific, a 5.1 out there uh, in that western or eastern part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. Not a big earthquake, but it's a rift point and it's um, kind of a moderate sized earthquake out there. Some deep earthquake activity, renewed deep earthquake activity out there in Fiji with a 4.9 earthquake. Um, actually, a five. Where where is that deep earthquake? Hold on. Four. I believe it's that 4.5, but it's definitely hiding there. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. Uh, yes, 4.6. I'm sorry, 4.6 earthquake striking. Uh, well, you can see the depth there in the right hand corner. 545 kilometers below surface there a uh, pretty good size deep earthquake there striking out there in the Fiji Islands region this area of the world I tell you what folks is not uh, any type of stranger to deep earthquakes I mean this is the the uh, seismic zone for deep earthquakes out there this area right here all throughout here in the Fiji Islands region although we go over here to the west, the western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, and we see some deep earthquakes out there as well. So it's uh, it seems as though this is the area for uh, those deep earthquakes, deep earthquakes out here that uh, we look forward to uh, when it comes to um, uh, potentially providing information when it comes to uh, subsequent surface quakes out there. Um, over here towards the northwest Japan region, we've seen a couple fours and fives out there. Um, and that's in the deeper range, but no major movement way down below. That uh, earthquake activity over there in the Mediterranean region has calmed down a tad bit. This earthquake activity just about ready to drop off the globe there. Quite a few fours and some lower fives being, report, uh, being reported out there south of Greece region out there in the uh, uh, Mediterranean Sea region so most of the activity right now the white color rings the green color rings North America right now folks and that's kind of what we're looking at right now see a 3.2 striking out there in the Utah region we're gonna go ahead and bring up the uh, uh, USGS map here and that's kind of not what I want here hold on one second folks and bring this into uh, view completely. Hold on one second here. There we go. And you're looking at, well, this is a 30 days. I do not want to go with 30 days. Let's go ahead and go to the, uh, uh, let's go one day all magnitudes out here, folks. One day all magnitudes out here on the flat map scale. If you've read that book where the sidewalk ends out there when you were a kid, I'm talking about uh, early 80s, you'll know what I mean. 
you can see a line of uh, I was gonna say storms but a line of earthquakes out there throughout the western part or the eastern part I should say of the Great Basin area just west of the Rocky Mountain region you can see Utah starting it off right there uh, with a low earthquake a 2.6 you head north there and there was a 3.2 moving up through Idaho another uh, almost three pointer head up further north and we're looking at 2.2 there this is kind of on the western edge of the North American Craton it's pretty much a region um, throughout history that has been relatively stable in the terms of seismic activity so it's uh, pretty much we're talking Colorado Wyoming eastern parts of Wyoming eastern parts of Montana North Dakota South Dakota Minnesota Ida Iowa Kansas parts of Illinois parts of northern Oklahoma parts of uh, northern Texas is an area where it's been relatively stable free from seismic activity over the last couple million years or so so but that doesn't mean that uh, earthquake activity is is going to stop there uh, we're seeing a lot of earthquake activity from the west uh, pushing up against that region there from the Pacific and uh, that's kind of what uh, we're looking at right now go ahead and zoom in here uh, away from that region let's go ahead and talk about the activity down there in the Los Angeles area there we've seen a couple three pointers there there was a 3.2 near Simni Valley near Chatsworth on top of that let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit more uh, there was some uh, th uh, 3.3 or so prior to that 3.2 so we're seeing a little increase in earthquake activity near Chatsworth uh, it's a pretty populated area but this area uh, is no doubt a uh, a region to watch for major earthquake activity and liquid 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 liquidation what's it called liquidation I think that's the word folks I get tongue-tied sometimes but that's part of uh, that's part of the deal um, yeah look up the liquid liquidation aspects out here in the semi valley in Los Angeles region there if a major earthquake strikes out here we're t we're talking about quicksand um, surface out there for all these folks there it's a bad area to live in and unfortunately we got millions millions of folks out there that love to live in this area and I am not one of them thank God thank you Jesus I am not one of these folks that want to live out here in this part of the woods there's no woods it's all asphalt it's all a bunch of um, buildings and and I, I don't get it <laughs> I don't get it there's way too many people out there folks I it's just that that's how I think anyway you guys are in trouble if you live out there when a major strike uh, a major earthquake hits out there I'm not even joking let's shoot on down here to the southern part of San Andreas fault system this is an area that I'm kind of concerned about right now uh, near the Salton Sea right here the uh, southern part of the San Andreas fault system ends right here on this uh, let's go ahead and see if we can light it up here maybe uh, maybe the USGS will let me let's see if we can I know I have the pl plates uh, enabled but just let me check one second here folks uh, <sighs> Mum, 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 mum. Hold on, folks. Oh, there we go. Okay, U.S. faults right there. I missed that. It was not checkmarked. Okay. So anyway, folks, look at this. The southern part of the San Andreas fault system, which is locked and loaded, according to the, you know, those professional folks that have a degree on their wall, right? That little piece of paper that claims they know it all. They can predict the future because they went to school for it. They went to school for all that knowledge, right? Because, well, you're a know-it-all. Anyway, folks, uh, we're seeing a little bit of swarming on the southern end of that San Andreas Fault system here. That's an area where those, you know, those professionals claim that it's completely locked and loaded 
and ready to blow with at least an 8.0 earthquake down there. This here is a Brawley Seismic Fault Zone. It's kind of like an extension, an underground extension, if you will, of the San Andreas Fault System here. But is it one and the same? I believe it is. It's a major plate boundary. And we're seeing a little bit of swarming out there, folks. Uh, at least a couple of one-pointers. We can go back over the last, well, let's see here. Let's go back over the last seven days, and we'll check 2.5 and above. Or was it 2.8 out here? West of that area. So, interesting activity out there occurring in that region of the world. Um, as we head up here towards the north along that southern section there, pretty quiet as we look at the San Andreas Fault Zone. Extending well up here to the north. There's been a little bit of creeping activity, but nothing um, out of the ordinary, right? We see that activity occurring all the time. Let's go ahead and check in the uh, Mendocino Triple Point Junction up here. That's a fault zone here between the Juan de Fuca Plate, the Pacific Plate, and the beautiful North American Plate there, all combining to create a crunch here for the folks and the humans that live out here. Not a lot of big activity, 3.4 near Petrolia, and uh, it looks like a 2.1 also striking earlier to the east of there as well. Uh, but something to watch and pay attention to as we uh, head into uh, a new work week. A new, well, a new week that is. I shouldn't say work week because a lot of folks definitely are not working out there. And, uh, and that's probably a good thing, right? I mean, uh, a lot of states are opening it back up. A lot of states are uh, talking about getting those businesses going, right? Getting them going, getting everything getting everyone uh, you know interacting and stuff like that but uh, we'll see what happens folks I'm not a big fan of the coronavirus uh, world so I'm not gonna jump in on that or chime in on that too much so anyway folks um, I was trying to get the Cascadia subduction zone slow slip event movement going on but i cannot get it at least here on my side not for sure what's going on um let me try one more time here and see what's going on with this thing at least today it's not showing any type of movement And, and that can kind of be a bad thing because that means that there's no, uh, there's hardly any movement going on. Uh, let's see here. All right, so not a whole lot, folks. I'm seeing a little bit, just a little bit of slow slip movement going on out there west of Seattle. Um, I, I can go ahead and bring this up here real quick uh, where you guys can see this activity uh, if you want to check it out yourself check out the Pacific Northwest seismic activity map and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about here it's a uh, it's not big there's not a big movement out there along the Pacific Northwest um, this is just from yesterday some seismic activity up there west of Seattle like I mentioned and some seismic activity in Northern California. This is the subduction area of the Cascadia subduction zone. Deep movement, folks. This is not surface quake activity. This is a uh, Cascadia subduction zone monitoring well below the surface. And these uh, events are being picked up by a slow slip event movement um, between these plates here, the North American plate and the one to one de Fuca plate here and it uh, it obviously gives off activity uh, here and there sometimes it's worse than others uh, worse days um, but right now over the past a couple days or so it's relatively quiet um, just sporadic seismic tremor being detected but uh, on the surface we're still watching that uh, 
waiting to see uh, what Mother Nature wants to do. So, anyway, folks, um, I do appreciate the uh, I do appreciate the comments and whatnot here on the channel. So, if you have any questions, any uh, concerns, any information uh, that you would like to provide, let me know here on the channel. I did see. I'm going to respond real quick to a, a question about the seismic graph stations here. Uh, not the vertical movement, but basically this up and down feature. I'm going to show you right here. There's a station here in Haley, Idaho that's occurring right here. Uh, they wanted to know why stations like this move up or down on the data that's occurring right there. And that's basically an instrumental issue. Um, it's not earth movement, but uh, it is internally a data issue there. So... Uh, sometimes, depending on the data that's coming through there, uh, the, the system itself will read an up or down movement. But an earthquake itself, like the data that's coming into the Southern California region right now, I'll show you that, is uh, very indicative of a uh, localized earthquake. And that's uh, coming up right now. It's coming up here. Hold on. Uh, Barrett. San Diego station here localized earthquake that's a spike it's a solid earthquake right there in that region they're probably definitely below a 2.0 otherwise this uh, earthquake data coming in would be flatlined so anyway folks um if you have any questions like I said let me know let my moderators know out here they're very good at uh, trying to answer your questions and whatnot or getting that question relayed to me so uh, please stay safe out there, folks. Latest earthquake, 2.7 out there in Puerto Rico. Still shaking, still rocking and rolling out there. Have a good one, folks.